How you doing there folks? Baders here with another video for you all. Today we're going to look at the top 50 horrifying locations and secrets in Red Dead Redemption 2. Remember if you like this video to fondle that like button because every time someone likes this video an angel gently farts on a watermelon. Note that there are spoilers in this video so if spoilers upset your nips then you better wear a really thick sweater. Now go ahead and polish your pod collection and let's get to average baiting baby! Now southwest of Lacay in the bayou, if you come here at night, you might find a lady who looks like the girl from the ring bawling her eyes out in the mud like a well-adjusted human person. Now if you decide to put on your good Samaritan panties and attempt to console the crying lady, she'll stand up and try to stab you in the eyes. But wait, that's not all you win for attempting to be a good person in this creepy night swamp. No, no. There's also three more hills have eyes look at mother just lurking in the bushes who try to stab and or murder you for trying to help a blabbering lady child keep her together. Now I'm not sure if this is a nod to Undead Nightmare or just some creep that Rockstar wanted to put in the game. Either way, it's best to stay away from crying ladies at night. You see a crying lady, you walk the other way. Now in the hills to the northwest of Fort Wallace in the grisly east region of Amberino, you can find a little hut which appears to be lived in. Oh, and what's that? A strange boiling liquid in the corner? Don't mind if I do! Oh god, not again. And that was the third time I got sexually molested. It appears that this little hut here was a witch's hut. So whatever you do, don't eat the soup because it's riddled with regrets, trust me. You think you're about to sit down to some chunky chicken noodle and before you know it, you wake up in the bushes pregnant covered in jizz. I don't know about you guys, but when I see a bumbling mysterious liquid, I think that should be in my tummy right now and I'd gobble it down. Suffice it to say, it's gotten me in some trouble in the past. So I wouldn't recommend it, no sorry Bob. Now northwest of Rhodes where the tracks meet the road is where you might catch a glimpse of the next haunting little secret. Now if you come by at night you might see a ghost train choo choo chewing up the tracks like a fluffy cloud like caravan. Come to think of it, I would probably ride a ghost train. But I wouldn't be caught dead on a ghost plane. Honestly, I would feel a bit unsafe. How are you going to convince me a plane's safe when it's made out of ghost? It's like definitive proof it's not safe. But I'd still ride that f***ing train. Pull on the big whistle and everything because I'm a savage. Located in Grizzly's East Amberino, you'll find a little house built into the hillside. Just like the houses in the Shire that the Hobbits lived in. And I hear if you place a picture of Frodo in front of the window and listen closely, you might hear Samwise Ganji cream in his panties. Yeah. Now I don't know about you guys, but I don't trust them Hobbitses. No, not as far as I can throw them. Mainly because they'll steal your jewelry and they'll toss it in a volcano. Or worst case scenario, dry hump it in a cave for the better part of a century. Either way, that jewelry is not something you're going to want back to show off to your girlfriends anytime soon. West of Blue Water Marsh, there is a barn door that says Stay Out Plague, which leads me to believe the Black Plague actually lives in that barn. Probably pays rent and everything. Put the damage deposit down plus first and last month's rent, so that plague isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Best not to open those doors, peoples, unless you want to get a face full of scabies. This is actually a reference to The Walking Dead when Herschel would lock the undead in his barn thinking they just needed some time to cool off and that their hair and skin would grow back. Herschel figured the undead just needed a little convalescing and they'd be right as rain. Eventually the rest of the group boarded up the barn and b lapped good old Herschel's quarantine strategy and wrote on the barn door, dead inside, or something along those lines. It's been a while since I've seen The Walking Dead. I mean, I stopped watching when I realized it sucked. Either way, this is a really cool little barn. Located in Big Valley, West Elizabeth, we have a dead person in what appears to be a faulty flying contraption. I say faulty because of the dead person. I think we can rule out Sully as the pilot here because he would have landed it safely on the Hudson River. Now this probably seemed like a good idea at the time, right? A couple of beers later, it seemed like a great idea! Now this might have been a failure to launch, but it was a stepping stone in the right direction, okay? It's experiments like this are what got chimpanzees in outer space, people, okay? They laughed at Louis Armstrong when he said he wanted to walk on the moon. Now he's up there 
laughing at them. <laughs> now, just across the street from the Undertaker's in Armadillo at the back of the building, Landon Ricketts, the old bird gunfighter from Red Dead Redemption, makes a cameo appearance on his own gunslinging playing card. He's way younger looking, though. Definitely doesn't have that crusty old man glimmer in his eyes anymore, does he? You know the glimmer old people get from being so old? People don't expect f all from them anymore. You know that liberating kind of old. He looks good here. You know, he looks perky. He doesn't look as weathered. Anyways, Landon is also mentioned a couple times in the story as well, paying homage to his gunfighting abilities, setting the bar by which other outlaws are compared. He is truly a characteristic of the Old West. West of Bradywine Drop is what appears to be the landing site of a big old hairy meteorite. Now, I couldn't tell for sure what it was, so I got really close and I licked it. Now, putting it in my mouth told me two things for certain. One is asteroids taste like really big rocks, and two, giant rocks from space don't kiss back. No, they do not. It's a very one-sided relationship. Either way, this is the landing site of a big rock from outer space. Now, the impact really messed up the whole forest in this general vicinity, which may or may not have made a woodpecker or a koala bear homeless. It destroyed a lot of trees, and it made a really big hole. Now, you can find this scientific abomination in a dilapidated house directly west of the Van Horn trading post. Go around to the side of the building, and there will be an open window with a way to climb inside. Once inside, there is a lot of really weird experiments. Put it this way, whoever owned this place was really into taxidermy and he wasn't afraid to take some risks. As one can see by this uglier than concoction hanging on the wall here. It's a bird! It's a pig! No kids, it's what nightmares are made out of. Now what kind of mad scientist cooked up this gnarly f***er you might be wondering right now in your brain skullet? I know that I did. I feel like whatever he was trying to make with this, he messed up big time. I mean, as a man of science, you definitely don't go into creating a new species thinking, boy, I hope I make something I can't make eye contact with without throwing up in my mouth. Probably got really drunk and one of his buddies dared him to do it. You know, probably really doesn't have any formal training when it comes to gluing dead things together. He just grabbed some arts and crafts gear and just full sent that shit. And this beauty is what you get when all those parameters come to fruition. Look at that. South of Donner Falls, there is a barrel with a super dead wet person inside of it. It would appear that this person was a big fan of the movie The Hobbit. As in The Hobbit, a character gets inside a big barrel and goes over a waterfall. So this person thought, hey, what a great idea. Gotten the sturdiest barrel money could buy and hurled their ass over a waterfall. Just like in the movie. However, gravity had a little bit to say about this situation and grabbed that barrel by its balls and smashed it down on some sharp rocks. Needless to say, this Hobbit fan didn't survive the impact, as one might expect from trying to turn a dangerous waterfall into a slip-and-slide amusement park ride. Not a good idea. Located in Big Valley, West Elizabeth, there is the remains of a giant whale, or a land animal that has the exact same bone structure as whales. This whale here clearly died of stupidity, though, okay? There's not a lick of water anywhere close to him. Not even a puddle. I mean, he probably died showing off to all them sexy lady whales and how far he could get away from the ocean. Clearly, Willie here got lost, and uh, he probably starved to death. Located east of Fort Wallace up in the mountains, you might find a monk sitting on the edge of a cliff in what appears to be deep thought. Now, I'm not entirely sure what he's thinking about. What are you thinking about, monk man? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I have my thoughts on what he's thinking about. I mean, he's probably pondering a way to fit a whole watermelon up his ass without scaring the other monks. Why else would he be in such deep thought, right? Exactly. Directly west of Deer Cottage, crossing the Roanoke Valley River, you will find an older-than-tits Viking tomb. It's got all the Viking tomb amenities as well, like a Viking axe conveniently located in this poor f***er's cranium, and it's even got a cool helmet that's great if you find yourself balls deep in a medieval sword fight. Who was buried here? Who cares? Who cares? Okay, all I know is all this shiny s*** is mine now, okay? So yeah, you can actually keep the helmet and the axe, which is pretty sweet. Hold on to those secret items. Just east of Beecher's Hope, and just before you get to Blackwater, there's a very memorable looking tree. This looks almost exactly like the iconic tree where Andy Dufresne f 
his dead ex-wife for the very first time, and also sent his prison buddy Red on a get-out-of-jail scavenger hunt in the movie Shawshank Redemption. There's just something about imagining Tim Robbins bumping uglies under that tree that always makes me smile. I have to remind myself that some birds aren't meant to be caged. They're meant to be out there destroying pussy under oak trees. And the part of you that knew it was a sin to lock them up does rejoice. Still, the place you live in is that much more drab without that pussy pounding savage slaying ass all the time under that tree. Am I right, Tim? Am I right? Damn, son. Damn. (laughs) West of Flatneck Station, you'll find a tree with a bunch of whiskey bottles just hanging from the branches. There is also a bunch of whiskey bottles littered around the tree, some on top of the tree, and some are even inside of the tree. Yeah, I think it's safe to say this tree clearly has a drinking problem. I think we need to get six to eight of its closest tree friends together, ambush it when it comes home from work one day, and intervention the shit out of this tree, okay? Now, shooting the bottles on the tree can be lots of fun. My favorite part about shooting empty whiskey bottles is that they don't shoot back. It's nice. It's stress-free. There is also some treasure in one of the whiskey bottles, so don't be shy. Get in there and have at it. You know, get that treasure. Shoot those bottles. Southwest of McFarland's Ranch, there is a treehouse with a guy who's talking all sorts of smack. Apparently, he thinks his little treehouse here is bulletproof because he's throwing insults out the window like they're beach balls at a Nickelback concert. Well, turns out his treehouse isn't bulletproof, and shooting it will blow out the floorboards and have this little tree princess fall to his death. He'll hit the ground like gravity stepped it up a notch that day. Okay, he just really comes down with the full force of it, you know? Now, upon inspecting the guy who fell from the tree, you see that besides the fact that he's deader than sh- he does look a little unusual, okay? I don't know why this guy chirps at people in his little treehouse, but uh, it would appear that, that it didn't work out well for him. Near Manzanita Post, you'll find a crashed up circus convoy, and I can only surmise what happened here. But my guess is that the clowns turned on everyone else in the circus and just started killing folks. This crew that you see here tried to make a hasty getaway, but they didn't buckle up and they got a face full of tragic accident. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. Never trust clowns. Now, if you look closely, there is also a reference to the conjoined twins in American Horror Story. You'll see them in the back of one of the cabs. Also, if you punch the fortune teller doll in the next card right in the glass, then instead of a fortune or some lottery numbers, she'll just chirp your haircut like a hero. Red Dead Redemption 2 contains a well-hidden reference to the video game Bully, which was published by Rockstar Games back in 2006. The slogan on the game's box art was Canis Canum Edit, which is edged into a weapon you can pick up at the end of the Gunslinger's questline from good old Tiny Balls Calloway. Canis Canum Edit actually means Dog Eat Dog. Plus, it's a really sweet custom showfield revolver, so it's definitely worth completing the Gunslinger's questline. If only to be able to wave this bad boy around all willy-nilly, just flexing on the NPCs. Now, if you do want to start up the Gunslinger's questline, then all you'll have to do is do the stranger task that's located in the Eastern Saloon in Valentine. South of Armadillo, there is a donkey lady thingy that was tied to this pulley system. Is it a donkey? Is it a lady? Who knows? Who cares? All I really want to know is, is it down to fuck? Because all this donkey talk has given me a boner. It looks like this thing has been dead for some time. Literally worked to the bone by the looks of it. Was Donkey Lady actually once a supernatural being like the Wendigo or the Grafted Monster? Not likely, no. The Donkey Lady is actually a reference to a glitch of the same name in Red Dead Redemption, where the game would spawn an NPC with the AI and face of a donkey. The glitch became popular after a YouTube channel by the name of Where to Boots made a video showcasing the glitch. West of Emerald Ranch in a little shack, you'll find a guy who has married a sheep. It's got a wedding ring on it and everything. It would appear that in the process of consummating his marriage to the sheep, they both died. The cause of which is unknown, but I can tell you this, it wasn't from a broken heart. I mean, he probably broke his penis going to town on that poor sheep's f***able ass. They died from loving each other too hard by the looks of it. Well, in any case, this definitely explains the donkey lady's origin story, doesn't it? Northwest of the Van Horn Trading Post, there is a guy who has quite possibly the worst bee sting I've ever seen. He seems to be making the best of things though, okay? Singing songs with his friends and whatnot. I mean, it looks like he might be having an allergic reaction. This could be fatal. I'm thinking maybe he needs some ointment or something for the swelling to go down. I don't know if anyone's told him that or not, but could be a good idea. Now, even though he does seem to have come to terms with the fact 
that he needs to find a better way to get honey in his mouth than ransacking some bees' nests. He still doesn't like it when people stare at his bee stings. I know this firsthand because I was just listening to his sweet tunes when he caught me eyeballing his battle bites, and then he proceeded to beat the shit out of me in front of his friends. Now, northwest of Rhodes here, just along the beaten path, you might find three fellows in a chain gang smashing rocks for the county. Things take a turn for the worst, and they full send it on the guards. Now, one of the inmates takes an L, but the other two make off into the woods like a couple of soggy bottom boys. They had their opportunity, and they run off. R-U-N-N-O-F-T. Now, this is more than likely a reference to Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, which is a Conan Brothers film. Although the particulars aren't identical, chain gang convicts escaping into the woods is all too familiar. Now in the bayou region of Liamor, just west of Lacay, you can find a small church likely built for children or small people. That or maybe they ran out of wood and thought, hey, why don't we just make it a little bit smaller? Nobody will notice. But they did notice. Yes, they did. This church looks like it was built for Frodo and the boys, if I'm being honest. I can see it already. Bilbo just banging out Bible verse while Smeagol beats his dick in the corner like a psycho. Samwise Ganji watching like a pervert. Just another day in the Shire, hey fellas? <laughs> Located in Grizzly's West Amberino, you'll find the remains of Ray Romano's character in Ice Age. Now, I'm no expert, but I can tell that these are mammoth bones. Why? Because they're way too big to be a cat's, okay? So if it's not a dead cat, if so facto, it's a dead mammoth. You know, it's simple logic, really. I honestly wonder what this mammoth was thinking just before he ate and died. It was probably something like, Boy, I hope I don't get frozen to death in the snowy tundra. Under a ridge on the southeast face of Mount Sean, north of Strawberry and West Elizabeth, there's a big old man skeleton. A giant by the looks of it. He looks like he may or may not have been a professional basketball player. Center, if I had to guess, okay? But how did he die, right? I think this one's obvious, people, okay? Shaquille O'Neal clearly found a time machine, went back in time, then died in this cave. Probably because he was too tall for the time era, you know? Walked out of the cave, got hit in the face with a fucking pterodactyl. I mean, it could happen to anyone, really. North of Brady Wine Drop, you'll find a guy who thinks he's the king of the forest. And honestly, who's to say he isn't? Now, I didn't know the forest had its own monarchy, but it does make sense that this guy would be the king. I mean, look at him. He's, he's pretty high up in that tree, right? And that dusty leaf covering his dirty giblets does look pretty prestigious. Now, when I woke up today, I didn't know I was going to run into royalty. But boy, oh boy, life can throw you some curveballs, can it? Anyways, the king of the forest here doesn't like it when you get close to his royal treehouse. So he'll just keep telling you to leave him alone until you leave. He'll also throw royal rocks right at your head, which are just like normal rocks, except they got dipped in an angel's piss. Now, if John Marston gets arrested in Blackwater, then there's a chance that Abigail will break him out. She comes into the police station all worked up, chirping poor old Jim Milton, but turns out it's all just a big ruse, because once the deputy isn't paying attention, she clubs the shit out of him, and the two of them just walk out of there. However, if she does break you out, then John is still a wanted man in Blackwater, and if the police catch wind of him, then things might escalate quickly. So it's better to leave Blackwater in a hurry if Abigail busts you out. Or you'll be back behind bars before you can say Dirty Squirrel. This is actually paying tribute to the first Red Dead Redemption in that they never gave John the ability to traverse through water at all. He's like a potato when it comes to water. A really, really heavy, shitty swimming potato. Now, if you get to the epilogue portion of the game and you try to go for a nice little evening dip in the kiddie pool, you'll find yourself deader than fuck in no time. Northeast of Big Valley, there's a super crazy cave that just says, nope, don't enter me. And what did I do? I went deep as fuck inside that cave and rubbed my on its innards. This place is like a maze on the inside, but if you follow the right sequence of tunnels, it will lead you to a weird guy that claims to be the devil. He's dressed kind of how you would imagine the devil would be dressed, and he has a fancy kind of dubious looking goatee. So if he walks the walk and he talks the talk, then clearly he's a crazy guy skulking about in a fucking cave. Now he's not actually the devil, but he does really want to be the devil, so there's that. Not sure that hell is accepting applications, but if they start, then maybe this guy will get his big break. I know I'm rooting for him. Now, west of Blue Water Marsh, there is a gigantic snake just hanging from a tree. It looks like Mike Tyson punched it in the face. It's either unconscious or dead or both. It's not going anywhere anytime soon is all I'm saying. Now, this is clearly a reference to the Jungle Book. That hurts a reference to a really big f***ing snake. Probably the Jungle Book, though, because Ka, the big snake in Jungle Book, looks an awful lot like this snake, except a lot less dead. 
Now, northwest of Hanging Dog Ranch, if you go up into the woods there, you'll see a rather unfortunate situation where a man and a bear got into a bit of a scuffle. Now, this grizzly bear was obviously very mad at this guy, okay? It looks like it was, it might have been personal. Now, I can't be certain, but maybe, just maybe, this grizzly caught this guy f***ing his wife. Last thing you want to see after a long day of stealing picnic baskets is some rando balls deep in your bare necessities, okay? So they had some words. The bear ripped off this guy's face and the guy stabbed the bear to death with a survival knife. The knife is actually a unique weapon in the game and can be collected to use later by John or Arthur. And this is also possibly a reference to the movie The Revenant with Leo DiCaprio because he does get manhandled by a grizzly bear in that movie. He survives though, but just barely in the movie. Not this guy. This guy's missing his whole f***ing situation. <laughs> he did not survive. Now, the very first heist in the game is a train robbery, and at the very start of the robbery, Arthur is standing like a badass in the way of the impending locomotive. The scene is really cool, and it's actually a reference to Jesse James and the coward Robert Ford. It's a slower than f western movie with Brad Pitt. Casey Affleck has some serious jealousy issues in the movie and shoots poor old Pitts when he's staring at his favorite pitcher. What a d Anyways, this exact scene happens in the first of the movie, and is basically the only exciting part of the whole f***ing film. Now, if you go east of Maddox Pond and you come across this crossing at night, it might bring forth a group of dastardly individuals initiating a new recruit. However, it's never a good idea to let stupid people play with fire. It's just a matter of time before one of them catches on fire and kills damn near the lot of them. Sure, there were a couple of survivors, but I'm sure they died of ignorance and intolerance shortly afterwards. Remember, kids, don't play with matches. Located in Rhodes during the epilogue, if you go into the general store as John Marston, you'll see one of your old gang buddies just living life, you know, selling goods, pretending like he wasn't part of a notorious group of hooligans. Now, if you chit chat with him, you guys will catch up, you know, chew the fat, talk about the weather, you know, normal people small talk, you know, nothing special. It's not like he gives you the keys to Narnia or anything, you know, cool like that. It's just really cool to see him after everything goes awry with the gang and all. At Coots Chapel, south of Armadillo, you'll find the gravestone of Francis Moon. That's right, guys and girls. Herbert Moon had a brother, and he's deader than f***. Coroner said natural causes, but I'm thinking foul play. I think it was Colonel Mustard in the dining room with a gigantic inflatable penis. Beaten to death by a penis. Worst way to go. Now, Herbert Moon, for those of you who don't know, is the mustache that owns the general store in Armadillo. A simple guy with a simple life whose brother was simply beaten to death with a penis. Now, there is a part of the story where the Vanderlyn gang goes ham sandwich on the Braithwaites, just dropping elbows on their foreheads like it's WrestleMania 41. All the Braithwaites take a big L, most of which dying in gunfire exchange. However, during all the commotion, the mansion sets ablaze. Catherine Braithwaite then takes the biggest L of all when she shows us what a materialistic old gizzard she is when she squirms her way back into the flames of the burning mansion. After the mission, if you come back to the mansion, you'll find dear old Catherine well done to a crispy charcoal. On her body, you'll find a one-of-a-kind necklace that sells for a pretty penny. So be sure to decimate the shit out of her corpse. Now, close to Shady Bell is a man dead and washed up on shore. This unfortunate fella was trying to escape a life without liberty. But by the looks of it, his escape strat didn't quite pan out as he doesn't appear to be breathing. He does, however, have a note on his body. Apparently, he had a pen pal or something that was trying to help him out. You know, get him to a more liberal area of the country. Which is a real bummer because, as you can see, he didn't quite make it. Now, this could be a reference to 12 Years a Slave or Django as both movies deal with liberating men from the shackles of slavery. Now, this gentleman is wearing a similar neck arm to Django, but has a similar correspondence and situation to Solomon Northup in terms of someone helping him from far away. However, both of those characters fight and achieve their liberty, one through violence and the other through sheer determination and an unwillingness to give up. It's safe to say I cried like a baby hamster after watching 12 Years a Slave. It's a super sad movie. Yes, it is. South of Roanoke Valley, if you keep your ears open in the forest, you'll be able to hear some ghostly motherfuckers talking about some really ambiguous shit. But I think one of them told me I smell like a donkey's nutsack. But like in a really creepy ghost voice. You know, it was like, You smell like a donkey's nutsack. I'm a ghost. I was like, hey Casper, not cool. Pretty sure I heard him snickering afterwards too. Either way, tread lightly and listen up. And you all can be the judge of this haunted as forest.
Northeast of Annisburg, you'll find a stone with a bunch of bizarre writing on it. Now, I'm no archaeologist, but I'm pretty sure this says, A bulimic jellyfish ate my last toaster strudel. That, or maybe it says, Send nudes in big letters. It's hard to tell. It's a little bit faded. It's a little bit faded. The rock is engraved with runic letters in the middle. It also consists of an engraved serpent, which surrounds the text in the middle. There's also runic letters on the serpent. Now, the script is written in Old Norse, and is obviously a reference to Vikings. Now, some fancy book-learned people say that the script actually translates to, We arrived by boat, beautiful land, gracious people, so we left them to live in peace. Sure, I believe that. I still think it says send nudes, but what do I know? Located in Big Valley, West Elizabeth, here there is what appears to be the site of a pagan ritual. I mean, there's a bunch of strategically placed candles around a mutilated corpse. It's definitely got all the tidings of an eventful Sunday. Maybe they conjure up a demon, maybe they don't. It's really not about what you're doing, is it? No, it's about what kind of twisted fucks you're doing it with. You know, that's what my Uncle Eddie always used to say. Now, next time you think you're having a bad day because Subway ran out of double chocolate cookies, just think about this guy and how much he could use a double chocolate cookie right now. For those of you guys who don't know, the mask that the dead guy's wearing, you can actually take that. You can steal his mask and you can keep that mask. That's your mask now. Yeah, you're welcome. It's super scary mask. Located in Big Valley, West Elizabeth, you'll find a tower-looking thingy. It doesn't do anything, really. At first, I thought it was a Transformer. I mean, I flashed the all-spark in front of it all willy-nilly, and it didn't change at all. So that was a no-go. So I guess it's just like an ordinary tower thingy. Maybe it's a reference to tiny towers. I don't... I have no idea. Kind of looks like a giant pointy penis, if I'm being honest. I'd imagine if Minecraft characters were large enough, their penises may look like this. Now, located in Blue Water Marsh, right up here, close to the water, is an area riddled with chilling secrets. Now, if you come here at night, you may be lucky enough to see a ghost lady who's having some relationship issues. Apparently, your BFF was raw dog in a rando, and she can't quite let it go. I personally think she needs to move on. You know, get out there and meet new dead people. She just needs that special someone to hump that crazy, lonely psycho right out of her. Note that you may have to come to this location on a few different nights for her loneliness to show up on the visible spectrum. However, if she doesn't appear, at other times she'll still whisper some ghostly sh** off in the distance. She'll be off in the distance just owning that creepy ghost lady vibe. Located in Braithwaite Manor, Liamor, you'll find the Braithwaite Secret. Make your way to the eastern side of Braithwaite Manor, where you'll find several houses all located near the water. From this area, head directly south into the shrubs, where you'll begin to hear the voice of a young girl. As you continue further into the overgrown area, you'll find a small white outhouse-style building. Here you'll find an unlucky lady chained inside that outhouse. She's also mumbling some incoherent sh** as someone might do when they're jammed up in a poop shack for God knows how long. Turns out they never let her out either. Apparently Catherine had the keys, and if you return as John, you'll find a much deader lady chilling in the sh**. Now some of you may not know this, but if you go around back and shoot the chain, then wait a couple seconds, absolutely nothing happens. Northeast of Menteca Fall, you'll find Seth Breyer's house. You know, the little grave-robbing anorexic lunatic from Red Dead Redemption? You guys remember Seth, right, from Red Dead? Yeah, remember he was the type of guy to own, like, a giant CD collection and only own a VCR? You know, the type of guy to double-bag groceries most people would just carry out of the store? Type of guy that's got lip hair on his ball bag? You know, a real weirdo. Yeah, well, this is his house, right here. Yeah, located on the water, and boy, is it a sh** hole. Now, southwest of Gaptooth Breach, laying on a little rock, there will be a really skinny guy not quite from this era. He's dressed like he's about to start a conga line, which makes me think he must have been a bit of a partier, this guy, you know? <laughs> Look at him. Well, it turns out he was a traveling salesman of sorts, with just a really sweet shirt. There's actually a letter on his body that explains he's a missionary, a religious missionary that would go around to different parts of the world and, uh, you know, spread religious rhetoric to the savages in untamed lands. However, this guy clearly got separated from his group. I mean, he was likely still a little freaked out and discombobulated when he and his friends didn't sail off the edge of the planet or whatever. Probably died of shock. 
West of Brandywine Drop, there is what appears to be an ordinary little shithole house on a hill. However, this little crap shack has a hole in the roof, all suspicious looking. It turns out the hole was caused by a meteorite that came crashing down as these poor sons of bitches were all gathered around one another, either eating or having a circle jerk. Either way, their whole situation just got pooped on by this meteorite. Now in the middle of this allotment of death and despair, the murdering little meteorite is just sitting there. And it's something that can be kept as like a souvenir. It also serves as a reminder that circle jerks can go horribly, horribly wrong. North of Cola Springs, you'll find a little cave. And inside that cave, you'll find a chest. And in that chest, there's a bunch of goodies, including a really sweet golden revolver owned by the legendary Otis Miller. It even has Otis's signature right there on the barrel. Look at that. Man, that's pretty. Now this gun is completely made of gold. So clearly Otis Miller got like a thousand headshots with this bad boy in Call of Duty. Now the first time you come to Armadillo as John Marston, you'll find out what happened to the Sheriff of Armadillo before Lee took the reins in Red Dead Redemption. Apparently the previous Sheriff was a bit of a tool. You know, he made a deal with some nefarious Mexican desperados, and it turns out they were a bunch of fibbers. And instead of giving him money in exchange for their friend, they shot him in the face. Now he was a crooked law enforcement officer, but a deal's a deal, man. So they were kind of a bunch of dicks, you know? So I shot them and murdered them. Checkmate, bitches. East of Mount Sean, there is a gorilla just hanging out of the back of this crashed wagon. This gorilla is stuffed. It's not real, okay? It's clearly a giant toy gorilla, probably an unattainable carnival prize for getting all the balls in one impossibly small basket. You know, this is the type of prize your date wishes you won her. You know, instead she's going home with a glow-in-the-dark pencil sharpener and a strong inclination that maybe your father was right about you. Maybe next time, just ask the guy to buy the big stuffed animal. Then everybody goes home a winner. Northwest of Lake Isabella, there is a guy colder than Elsa's tears just sitting cross-legged in the snow with a rifle in his hands. This guy obviously thought he could fight off a snowstorm, as one does when they've been hitting the Bud Light since 12.30 on a Tuesday afternoon. This guy saw a storm front moving in and thought shelter was for cowards. He decided to face the storm head on like a man, with nothing but a rifle and a pocket full of courage. Turns out guns don't ward off storm clouds, and no amount of push-ups will keep hypothermia out of your body. This guy died like he lived, drunker than f Thanks again for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to slap that subscribe button like it's three weeks behind on your rent. Where's the money, Where's the money? Where is it? Also, go ahead and hit that bell icon, too, because apparently YouTube thought there should be extra steps. Why not, right? I'd like to subscribe, but first I have to click this and this and do this. Oh, it needs an email. All right, and this. Okay, Just tell me when he's uploading. Once you do all that, if you're lucky, at the stroke of midnight, a tiny little average baiter's fairy might come and tickle your butthole. Now, I hope to see you all again next time, and remember to keep on average baiting, baby.